Hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from Razor Emporium today to do a video much requested by our subscribers to talk about how to sanitize and store and take care of different vintage razors by different metal types. Let's get started. So you may have gone out recently to an antique store or you got a great score on eBay of a vintage razor and your first question is, I want to use it, how do I do this safely? How do I get it cleaned up and, and stored safely at home using at-home techniques? Uh, we're always here for you, the professionals. You can always send a razor in for service, but I also want to empower you guys at home to take care of some simple things. Uh, okay, so the very first question you need to ask yourself is what is the plating on this razor? And that's very, very critical because different razors require different kinds of cleaning, and you can actually do damage or harm if you don't know what it is and you use the wrong products. So, in the world of razors, there are four, uh, well, like maybe five, four or five uh, main kinds of plating you're gonna come across. Um, typically from Gillette, almost every single Gillette, like a Fat Boy or Super Speed is gonna be nickel. And nickel is gonna come across with kind of this real medium hue, um, you know, kind of a grayish tone to it, kind of a dull gray look to, the, to nickel. Even if it's shiny, it still looks kind of grayish. Um, very similar to nickel is gonna be chrome. That's gonna be like modern razors or old vintage German razors are gonna have kind of a blue kind of hue to it. Then the other really common one's gonna be aluminum. That is gonna be stuff um, like this. Usually aluminum is gonna be oxidized, so it will be also kind of dull looking, but kind of more of a white look uh, compared to um, nickel. It's gonna have kind of a white silvery kind of look. And then there's silver itself, and silver can look lots of different ways. This. This silver razor here, this repeater, has kind of a, a whitish kind of gray, uh, especially areas like this are super white that were unexposed, but then there's areas that are really dark that have almost a black look. So it just depends on the patina. They, they can look really, really dark. I've even seen silver turn out looking brassy or green. I mean, it really, it, the oxidation can vary wildly in, in, its, in its presentation to you. And then lastly, and hopefully the easiest to find uh, of what it is, is gonna be gold. Uh, hopefully everyone knows what gold looks like, um, but sometimes it's brass you're really seeing and the gold's all gone. And that's pretty common for old vintage razors. All of them are gonna need the very first step and they all can, can have the same exact product for the first step. And that's gonna be to clean your razor because the number one thing that's on your razor right now is soap scum. It's not necessarily rust or a bunch of tarnish or a bunch of damage to the plating. A lot of times it's just dirty and has soap scum on it. So my number one product I've always recommended and recommend for years and years to everyone I know is dish detergent. Now I happen to like Dawn myself, but there's lots of different dish detergents out there. As long as it's a detergent, not a hand soap, you should be fine. And I can give you a quick demonstration of what that you're gonna be doing. Uh, so the best tool in your operation is gonna be plain old tap water, some dish detergent, and your trusty toothbrush. Now a regular old you know, toothbrush that maybe is no longer in use in your household would be absolutely fine. Um, you know, you can get a specific one just for razor cleaning that's maybe a soft bristle, but just really scrub it. Just get in there and kind of with a more of a soapy base, really work all these little angles and that's what toothbrushes are great for. Now there are some specialized nylon bristle brushes like this, this is for cleaning firearms. Uh, you can get them at a sporting goods store. And these have usually a detail end and a, a more of a general end, and you can use them to really scrub and get into different areas depending on what the need is. Um, they also have another kind of brush that you can safely use on brass and nickel-plated razors. And I say that um, because I, I don't want you to use it on a gold-plated razor. So if it's nickel, um, go ahead and you can use a soft bristle brass brush. Um, you don't want to get the stiff ones that are used like a wire brush or steel that are used for taking paint off. This is pretty soft and also can be get, got at a hardware store. And you don't want to, you know, bear down and really, really scrub because you can scratch nickel, but generally brass is softer than nickel, so it shouldn't scratch the finish. And this, these are nice because you can get into these areas um, and it's obviously more coarse than nylon and it should do a really good job of getting off um, heavy water deposits, like let's say it's green and working the handle especially, the brass brush does a great job at that. So, good tool here. If you're working with gold or aluminum or silver, 
I would not recommend using a brass brush just because you can damage those softer finishes with this stiff metal brush. So stick to nylon on those finishes. Um, but anywho, just work your way around with the, with the dish detergent. You can rinse and repeat several times um, and get some different you know, levels of cleanliness going. But the most important thing is to just work the whole razor and try to get off any large amounts of soap scum or water deposits that you can. And you're probably gonna notice when you're done with this step that the razor looks a heck of a lot better. So another popular method of cleaning razors that people recommend all the time is scrubbing bubbles. This works great as well. You can see if you just, you know, spray it over your razor, just like it's in the bathroom, it's gonna foam up. And you can also then use a toothbrush and agitate and really work this in. I would say this works um, similarly to, to dish detergent. Uh, you may have it on hand, so that's great. Uh, and it will also provide some sanitation, so that's, that's another uh, great factor with, with the scrubbing bubbles. And just rinse it off and you're good to go. Okay, now that we're done cleaning our razor, it's the next step, polishing. Now this is an area where you can get yourself into some trouble if you don't know exactly what to use or use the wrong product. What you want to avoid are things like wheel polish for chrome wheels um, or heavy duty chemical cleaners, stuff that are meant for really solid metals. Because remember, this is a plated metal. It's not the same as a solid metal. Just because a label says it's safe on gold doesn't mean it's safe on gold plating. You know, a gold ring is solid gold. Gold plating is super, super thin and you can go right through that very quickly. So for polishing, there's a couple different techniques. Uh, I'll start with the most recommended that I've said for years and is a pretty good technique, flits. Um, so flits polish is something that you can pick up at a hardware store. I like it better than Moss, M-A-A-S, which is another product that people generally recommend for safety razors. Uh, this is a polish that you can get at a hardware store and generally you can just put right onto the metal and use a cotton towel and just basically scrub it more or less. You're going to polish it. And you're going to be noticing as you're using this that you're going to have a stain on the actual uh, cotton towel that you're using. That stain is not tarnish necessarily, maybe some of it is, or um, um, dirt. That is actually the nickel plating coming off. So that is nickel coming from the razor and being deposited onto your clean cotton towel. The reason that's happening is because these are um, more or less uh, abrasive finishes. Now, some are less abrasive than others, but they still rely on a chemical to more or less etch the metal and, and kind of take off the top layer of, of oxidation or of wear and expose new, clean, shiny metal underneath. That's how it gets shiny, is you take off metal. It's just like sharpening a pencil. You take off some wood to get to a new edge. You take off some plating to get to a, a new finish here. Um, the reason I say that you should be careful using something like flits um, or moss is that they can go really quickly, meaning you can be working an area and before you know it, you go right through the plating and now you see a glimmer of yellow shining through like the golden ticket. Uh, but unfortunately you didn't win, you lost because you've now damaged the finish uh, and you've, you've, you've brassed it. You've gone through the finish altogether and there's no way to fix that without replating it. Um, so I always say go very slow and, and use a lot of care with, with flits. Uh, you can use stuff like Q-tips and get into all your little nooks and crannies and really work it around. But again, it's something you need to do with a lot of care. Uh, I would never recommend flits or moss or any metal polish that, for that matter on a gold razor at all. Uh, you will go through this finish nearly instantaneously because it is extremely soft and that's just chemistry. That's just the fact that gold is a very soft metal. Um, I would also not recommend it on a silver plated razor. Um, again, silver is a pretty delicate metal on the periodic table and it's not very hard compared to nickel and you can go through the silver plating very, very quickly. So there is a product that, um, that I recommend and I, I shameless plug here for my $5 polishing cloth. I know I make tons of money off these, uh, but we designed this, this, this polishing cloth not to make a bunch of money, but to give our customers a tool 
that was safe on everything. And we like these cloths and we use them all the time in our shop because we don't, we don't use flits at all. We don't use any kind of chemicals like that. We use polishing motors that have wheels on them and we use these for final detail work because you, can, you don't need a separate cotton towel. This is the polishing cloth itself. It has an embed, embedded um, polishing rouge, very similar to what we use on the polishing motors, the polishing wheels. It's in the fabric and you can go right over it and just rub and you'll be amazed at how much luster comes off the metal with just simply going over it. And the nice thing is it's not only safe on nickel, but you can grab your gold razor and you can also go over gold and you can you know, rest assured that you're not gonna be doing any damage. Now, if you sat there for 18 hours polishing a gold razor with this, you may go through the finish because it is gonna take it off, but it's gonna go very slowly. And that's the critical thing I want you to understand. A, me a metal polish that's a liquid is gonna go quite fast. Something like this polishing cloth is gonna go quite slow. You do see, still see the same deposits on this cloth, and that is, is the metal coming off. Um, so even if you're doing gold, you are taking off some gold plating as you're polishing this up, but it's gonna go very, very slow, and it'll take a while to really go through the finish. Um, on silver razors, you can use this as well. That's the great thing about this cloth, is it's safe on every metal, every plated metal or solid metals. So you can use the, the same polishing cloth. Another technique that I've used a lot for silver is actually whitening toothpaste. Uh, I don't know what it is, I think it's maybe the whitening part, the baking soda, but it does a, a great job of kind of giving some luster. Um, there's also another method we've, we've used and talked about on our blog that you can look at uh, involving using uh, baking soda and a piece of aluminum foil and some hot water, and you actually put the uh, plated, you know, the silver plated razor onto a piece of aluminum foil in like a glass dish, like a Pyrex, and you can put some hot boiling water and some baking soda, and it actually will take the tarnish off and deposit onto the aluminum foil without actually taking any silver plating itself. It'll only take the silver oxidation, not the silver itself. That's probably the best method to, to do silver. Um, the polishing cloth is another great method. And lastly, as I was kind of starting to say, some whitening toothpaste. I don't know what it is, but I've had great luck with it. You'd be surprised. You, you lather this thing up, and you'll watch some of the tarnish disappear. So this is another great way to attack a silver plated razor. Now personally, I really like silver uh, plated razors to have tarnish, but I also like to collect them. I think if I was using it every day, I'd want it to be um, tarnish free, but that's just me. Um, you'd be even surprised after you get this toothpaste on, if you just kind of work, like especially the knurling or fine detail with your finger, like my finger has a dark look to it now. The toothpaste is actually tarnished. You see that? That's amazing. So this will work to take off tarnish and get your razor uh, polished up. And lastly, the only razor metal I haven't covered yet is aluminum. Um, and the best way, usually aluminum, it's not plated, it's solid. So it's actually the easiest of all of them. So th this is another repeater that's a solid aluminum case. I could go to town with my metal polish. This is where you can uh, use heavy duty products, you can use a aluminum uh, wheel polish is fine. It, you really can't hurt it because it's solid metal, it's not plated. So you can take something that's really badly tarnished, aluminum, and get it to look brand new again um, and just go to town working on it because you're not going to hurt anything. So uh, we, again, we don't use polishes like this by hand. It would take way too long in our commercial shop to do that. We have polishing rouges and we have a special wheel and a special rouge uh, only for aluminum and it, it makes it look amazing. The other benefit of polishing with a machine versus by hand is you actually can shape the metal. So something like aluminum, if there's a, a divot or a scratch, it will actually, you can really remove that with a wheel quite quickly in a matter of seconds where you'll be here all day polishing by hand. It'll be shiny, but you won't see big scratches taken off. Um, you could use a Dremel tool if you wanted to add some power at home. If you have one, a little cotton attachment on a Dremel tool, be really careful. Dremel tools can easily make a rut in your metal. And that's one reason we don't use any Dremel tools here. We use you know, four inch, three inch, six inch cotton polishing uh, wheels on motors is because think of that wheel, a little Dremel that's the size of a nickel or dime, you know, half inch or whatever, they can leave a little rut. So you're, you're working on an area and before you know it, you've actually made a little small divot and the light will shine off it differently and you'll wonder why it's there. So having a bigger wheel, you won't see that ever. Um, so that's aluminum for you. So I think we covered how to polish all of these. And now to the final stage 
uh, and the most important if you're going to be shaving is going to be sanitation. So people ask me all the time, how do I sanitize? Uh, honestly, the cleaning step of using Dawn dish detergent probably ended up uh, cleaning it the same way as your dishes are. It's now kitchen safe. It would be no different than a fork or a knife you get at a restaurant that's been, you know, with some dish soap and maybe through a dishwasher, that's it. The scrubbing bubbles probably did a pretty good job of sanitizing things as well. But if you really want to go the extra mile, if you want to get, a, you know, that, that I feel great about using this vintage razor feeling, I, I don't have to worry about it. There's nothing like some Marvies or some other kind of um, commercial disinfectant product. Now, very, very important note about Marvies is you do not leave razors in Marvies. This is a misnomer that uh, I think people associate these jars with barber shops. And yes, you know what goes in here? Combs, plastic combs go into a Marvies jar, not metal razors and not straight razors. Um, this is something that you can use for disinfecting, but it is a, it's a bath and just like a bath, items go in, items go out. The out is just as important as the in. <laughs> you don't want to leave it in here uh, for an extended period of time. I would say a few minutes is more than enough. Um, you know, if you've done a good job with cleaning and polishing, there really shouldn't be much left on your razor and you're really now just worried about maybe tiny little corners, nooks and crannies uh, that you want to get clean. But don't, don't kid yourself. Know the facts. Um, the only thing you need to be really concerned about on these razors is, is, is rust, is actual red rust. Uh, if, you know, in terms of getting a disease or something or getting sick or injured by an old vintage razor. If you see blood or hair or anything like that, it may be gross, I won't deny it's gross, but it is not a hazard to your health because it's dead. Meaning if it was blood, there's no blood pathogen that's gonna survive 50 years on a piece of metal exposed to the elements. Doesn't happen. Blood pathogens are dead in a matter of seconds, if not minutes. Um, so this is really to get off maybe any residual chemicals you've used. This is to give you peace of mind that it's sanitary, that it's been sanitized. If your wife or significant other asks you, how could you be using a vintage razor? Isn't that gross? And someone will, well, hey, hey, I sanitized it. It's done. It's fine. But even after you're you know, pulling out the Marvies, you still want to rinse it off. Um, get off all that Marvies. You don't want to let it sit on there. And then dry it. Dry it with a cotton towel. Um, you know, hair dryer would be amazing. We use, we use compressed air. If you're a little air gun, like for cleaning out a computer, that'd be fine. But um, yeah, I'd definitely give it a good, good wipe down. And this is something you should do after every shave. You should always, you know, clean up your instruments when you're done. Just like a surgeon, they always clean up their instruments. They don't start the procedure with dirty tools. Don't have a shave with dirty tools. Clean your razors, people. <laughs> um, another easy way, uh, if you don't have a Marvies jar or don't want to spend the money on that, uh, buy yourself or reach into the cabinet and get some rubbing alcohol. You can just pour some rubbing alcohol right over this and again it's going to have pretty much the same effect of sanitizing it and making sure that it's it's uh, officially clean. It's It smells like alcohol. It must be clean, right? Um, so yeah, that is, that is how to take care of some razors at home in a nutshell. Um, the methods I used here today are something I used when I first started off uh, buying and selling razors and collecting razors years ago. Again, in our, in our workshop, we do things a little bit different, but I wanted to make this video to show you guys how to do this safely at home and to really know the metal types. Know if it's gold, know if it's chrome, if it's silver, if it's nickel, you know, if it's, if it's uh, what's, what's, aluminum, that's the last one. Even rhodium, uh, if you've had a, a razor redone by us in rhodium or a vintage rhodium razor, these polishing cloths are great for that. I would also say you could you know, follow the same guidelines as, as gold or silver. You want to be pretty careful. Even though rhodium's hard, you can scratch easily. So be safe, be careful. Don't damage your razors. Uh, we are here to provide services for you guys, but I always hate to see a razor that otherwise would have been fine, but the customer actually inflicted the damage themselves. Um, one last question I want to address before we sign off today, dishwashers. People have heard me say or other people say that dishwashers are safe. That's generally uh, a good guideline. I would, I would just have a caveat that razors that have painted numbers, painted bands, uh, even like the black handle super adjustables that uh, some of them were anodized, some were painted black, uh, the red tips, the blue tips, anything with paint, you're running a big risk putting old vintage paint into a dishwasher. Um, if you want to cover that area, maybe you'll be a little bit more safe, but dishwashers, maybe on the gentlest cycle on the top rack, you'll be okay. 
Uh, I do see the benefit of steam cleaning. You know, that's awesome. You're going to steam sanitation in the dishwasher. But I think you can do all of, all of the cleaning and probably a better job just with an old toothbrush and some soap at the sink. I think you'll be a lot happier and you'll have a lot less risk of, of getting the old paint out of these numbers, that band or whatever off, and not doing any more damage. We have a rule at Razor Emporium. First, do no harm. Much like a doctor, we never want to damage razors. We want to take care of them. We want to preserve them. And I hope today's video has helped to get some of these methods across to you. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment. If you know another method, tell me. And you could be entered in to win this, the Razor Emporium black and blue t-shirt. We'll pick one uh, winner out there just for leaving a comment. You're entered into drawing. And uh, click the bell to, you know, to get notifications of when we actually come out with new videos for you, our valued customer. Thank you so much for watching. And stay tuned to Razor Emporium for all things vintage shaving.